Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Professor Spira, and uh, it's it's been a little been a little while since I've come on here on YouTube and done a little live uh, live discussion. But uh, was uh, actually really excited today because I've been working extremely hard over the past several weeks to finish. Uh, what I'm going to call uh, Spira's Notes, the official Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course study guide uh, based on Professor Arnold Eric's Mucus's Diet Healing System. And uh, so I just wanted to share that with you. And I thought at the same time, uh, I got a couple goodies in the mail that I thought uh, some of you might enjoy checking out. Uh, first and foremost, we see it... Uh, in the uh, message that I just sent out on Facebook, I talk about the uh, memorabilia, the, the Arnold Arid memorabilia. And look at what I found. I found online, I think I got this on eBay. This is a vintage interclean herbal laxative. And that's the name, uh, interclean was the name that was used to uh, promote the. Uh, the herbal stomach and bowel formula that that Eric uh, talks about in Mucus's diet healing system. And uh, so it says an uh, inner clean herbal laxative at the top perfected and originated by Arnold Eric. Uh, none genuine without this signature. Got to have the signature there at the top. Uh, an aromatic herb compound for occasional constipation. Uh, it's got uh, agar, frangrula, cena, and psyllium seed. Interclean Company, Beaumont, California. And uh, it says net weight, three ounces. And uh, Interclean, trademark registered U.S. Patent Office. On the back, it says uh, directions. Interclean herbal laxative is exceedingly easy and pleasant to take. The same dosage for one person may not suit another because no two people are uh, uh, constituted exactly the same. Usually a small amount, about the quantity that you put uh, could put on a dime, is sufficient for adults. This amount may be increased or decreased according to individual needs. Interclean herbal laxative should be taken either first thing in the morning or just before retiring, placing on tongue and washing down with a glass full of water, preferably hot or maybe mixed with stewed fruits, applesauce, etc. For children from 7 to 12 years of age, start with about one half adult dosage. 12 years or over, adult dose. Caution, laxatives should be avoided in case of abdominal pain, vomiting, or nausea, which may be symptoms of uh, appendicitis. Do not use a laxative continuously or too often as it may result in a laxative habit. So this was something that was put out uh, particularly by uh, Fred Hirsch. Uh, and I know that this was uh one of the things but, but besides the book so he ha had the books and then he also had the uh, the inner clean which he was putting out and uh uh and yeah so i don't know this is of course you i'm not going to use this this is very old i wish i could figure out the date of this it's uh uh there's no no place on here it says the date uh, I could probably, I mean, just based on the way it looks, I would say that this is, I would, if I had to guess, I would guess this might be 60s, might even be 50s or 60s. I think it looks too, looks too old to me to be 70s. But, um, and by that time, I'm not sure if they were still selling it in, in this kind of packaging. Now, I don't know if I have it here might be in the other room but uh, some time ago I was given a uh, another it was an inner clean sample 
it was like a, a little pouch and it had uh it was like kind of this similar color to this it was kind of uh but then that was that was pretty old from what that from what i was told uh by the person that gifted it to me um i was actually i was given that as a gift from uh alvin last who is the was the former owner of eric publishing from about uh, sometime in the 1970s to 2011, he was uh, he owned Eric Publishing, and I got a chance to talk with him a little bit a few times, and uh, kind of kind of befriended him a bit. And he uh, was always uh, just real nice to me, and I asked him a lot of questions because he he had did quite a bit of research back in the in the 80s and 90s, and he was responsible for keeping Eric's uh, work in print uh, and 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 out there for people to check out uh, as we're talking about the gifts another gift he gave me he actually i don't know if you'll be able to see this uh, this is uh, a document that the the top of it is well the whole thing is in german and this is a, a one of many pages from eric's collection of unpublished writings and so there is uh and i and i uh, i think i know where it is and i'm i would i'm gonna reach out at some point when i get the time i want to reach out to who i think may have all of this stuff because uh, alvin last no longer has uh has these things in his possession and there is a there's a youtube video where alvin was interviewed and they go through some of the stuff that's it's like this big chest full of all of Eric's uh, former former belongings but uh he sent me this and i had a, a friend a while back years ago had uh tried to train that was good with german tried to translate this for me and it was uh, 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 a a kind of a spiritual text uh, kind of an, an analysis of uh, uh some christian ideals and it was kind of uh and, and that was something that was being said was that Eret had had uh, an unpublished or was working on a, a sp some kind of spiritual document or a document that was kind of on spirituality and Christianity and religion and that kind of stuff. And so that might be a piece of that. But uh, I, I would love to get uh, access to to those documents, or maybe you know, and, and sometime in the future, and be able to. Uh, translate some of some of these things and you know, put them out there for, for folks to be able to check out and um, I see all the live chat uh, Yorg hey what's going on uh, let's see what else do I got in here this is an old this is the oldest rational fasting booklet that I have you can see it's very small what is this, uh, this is a 1938 uh, 1938 edition of uh of rational fasting for physical mental and spiritual rejuvenation and i know the the lighting is kind of can't really see see stuff too good but yeah this is the sixth edition and uh of course rational fasting is uh is interesting because it's it's not that the the original rash of fasting as you can see it's not that big but over the years, different publishers would put different writings, you know, unpublished writings and other things to kind of beef it up. <clears throat> so the rational fasting that a lot of people are familiar with is the Eric Publishing rational fasting, which this edition, I think, is still still being published. And somewhere along the line, and I'm not exactly sure when, which year, which edition, uh, Fred Hirsch added article by him, and then also the the famous Teresa Mitchell article, uh, and uh, as well as definite cure of chronic constipation and overcoming constipation naturally, that was added to it. So the original was just rational fasting. Then you get Fred Hirsch adding health and happiness through fasting. Uh, and then you get your Teresa Mitchell by Road to Health and uh, build your own uh, build your own road to health. And uh, 
than internal uncleanliness by Fred Hurst. So much of what's in here isn't what was in the original rational fasting book, as you can see. And these were and, and a lot of these books are interesting because they evolved like that over the years. They evolved. And because there are so, so much time between when somebody is reading the book and when the orig when the book originated, uh, a lot of people don't really think about these kind of things or, or realize like, wow, this is really different. So the question is, well, what? Because uh, uh, because the question of authenticity is always a thing to say. Well, what was the author's origin original intention? And with this this type of book and this kind of tradition. Uh, you would be limiting yourself if you went back to the to if you could find the the original Eret documents and you was okay you were a purist like this is all I'm gonna read nothing I don't want anything changed you would be reading a very different uh, mucus diet healing system book for one because Fred Hirsch uh, changed it over the years and and I prepared a if you happen to speak Spanish you may have already read. Uh, article that I wrote on the vegetarian lesson section. And uh, uh, at some point out when I get the time, I'll release it in English. But I do an analysis to show some of the older editions of the mucus's diet. Where did my old edition go? I'll just do this one. So this is a this is a 1924 fourth edition. These are actually this is a this is a seventh edition, 1924, and this is a uh, sixth edition. And then I somewhere around here, I have a I have a fourth edition that looks different from this. But. Uh, oh. And so here, so I I have two. Fourth editions. So these are, and, and, and this, I just, oh, this, this is just like heavy. This is like where this is like, this is some ancient, you know, an ancient book, some ancient wisdom going on here. But um, so if you look at these 1924 editions and specifically, if you look in the vegetarian uh, section, first of all, the lesson numbers changed. Fred Hurst changed and split up the final transition diet uh section and and so by the time you read a more current edition the uh uh the let the number of lessons is different they the number of lessons have been increased and the way that they were increased even changed to just being in a in an addendum uh to actually being its own lesson by the time you get to the 1994 edition but let me find that. Yeah, so there's transition diet 127. But I was, uh, and I, 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 <laughs> I didn't even mean to be getting going into all this, but now that since I got the book, uh, but what's interesting is first of all, what lets us know that much of this lesson was added by Fred Hirsch posthumously after Arnold Eric died was uh, we have a part that says note and this goes all the way back to this 1924 edition note Professor Eric frequently refers to having purposely omitted recipes in spite of repeated requests and gave uh, as his reason in nature such as such as exist in the animal kingdom there are absolutely no mixtures at all the ideal and most natural method of eating is mono diet one kind of fresh fruit when in season, so on and so forth. We feel sure that Professor Eret would have approved and granted permission to include a few mucus lean recipes, particularly of salads, in this sixth edition of his mucus's diet healing system after being convinced, as we have, that the public demand requires substitutes from the present day acknowledged method of food preparation if they are to successfully take up uh, the Eret method, so on and so forth. But uh, when you start to look at the actual recipes, if you go to the, the, the section that was 
that was really changed. So if you, if you have a copy either of uh, the annotated version or you have the, the, the one of the other newer versions, if you look under the section cooked ve vegetable recipes, uh, there's a, a lot, half of these at the beginning aren't even in there anymore. They, they were taken out before the the 1953 edition and this was the actual thing i wanted to show because i had just got this in the mail from um from i got this thing on ebay this is 1953 january 12th 1953 Eric literature publishing 13th edition so this is what it looks like and the the layout inside is actually it still maintains the same layout uh, pretty much had the same look inside up until uh, I think some of the additions that started to come out in into the 60s and 70s. But that's part of what I'm researching now. I'm trying to get my hands on as many uh, older copies and, and editions as I can. And I, I, I have a tendency to focus mostly on the Eric Publishing editions. Uh, but I am going to start putting a little bit more time into some of the Benedict Lust editions. And the reason for that is I, uh, uh, Randy turned me on to, there's a, there's a whole section in the back of the, of the rational fasting put out by Benedict Lust. They obviously, it, it, there's a whole backstory between kind of a rivalry between Benedict Lust publications and Fred Hirsch's air at publishing and there, 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 there's a beef there that uh, uh, the, it's like the people involved in it that really know that story. A lot of those folks are, you know, they're, pa they're passing away and they're hard to find. But I know that I heard enough that, that they had some issues <laughs> because Fred Hirsch wanted to be the exclusive publisher of Eric's work. Whereas from what I heard, allegedly, uh, whereas Benedict Lust, he was the original publisher for Arnold Eret before Eret and Fred Hirsch joined and Fred Hirsch became Eret's uh, uh, manager and business partner and you know 19, after 1914. Before that, Benedict Lust had been working with uh, Arnold Eret and publishing some of his earlier things. So they continued to publish versions of Eret's work and I think where some of the issues might come in is there it's obvious there's some editions of benedict lust version uh, versions of the mucus's diet where it was obvious that they had been looking at some of fred hirsch's stuff because they uh, is it the same thing where it says note we think we would add it it's like well wait a minute who wrote that note did it, now i'm i'm assuming if fred hirsch wrote that note uh but since nobody signed it with the, the thing that I just read before the note, since nobody signed it, uh, the, no, if you see what I'm saying. If when Benedict Lust publishes that and they publish the whole book that really comes from what Fred Hirsch had added something to, then it's like, well, wait a minute. That, that's that's my copyright because I wrote I wrote these words, you know, so, so talking for Fred Hirsch. And so, like I said, there's there's a whole kind of drama, a whole thing there, and um, and there's a lot to really tease out of, uh, of of these books. But this but this particular edition of Rational Fasting, since they don't have the Fred Hirsch articles and they don't have Teresa Mitchell articles, they added some uh, they added some additional articles and some of them I hadn't read yet so they have uh and and I actually just I I re recently kind of read through them but when a there's a article called my, my mucus's diet and naturopathy there is the mucus's diet healing system which he wrote and presented as a paper presentation to and uh, the the naturopathic society. So this was more like a formal paper presentation that you would give in an academic environment. Uh, that was uh, that's kind of interesting. It's basically a summary of of mucus diet healing system. Then uh, the truth about human nourishment and the conquest of gluttony. 
Uh, it's kind of an interesting. I mean, most of these, there's they're, they're not necessarily a whole lot of new stuff, but it might just be saying the same stuff in a different way as Eric tends to do throughout a lot of his writings. Uh, but it's uh, but it's it, it, but there's definitely some some great quotes in here. And it's just it's always nice. I mean, I just always enjoy reading some some new uh, Eric stuff. Um, then physical culture uh, bef- later. This is one article that uh, that ended up in physical fitness, which is currently out of print. And that's another project that I'm working on now is Mugus Free Life edition of physical fitness. So we'll bring that or those original articles back and uh i might might even end up adding uh, one of these articles to it and uh we, we'll see then they have thus speak of the stomach uh definitely cure chronic constipation so it basically so it just it pads the book because <laughs> the first part is, is just is is the original uh you know basically this you know as you can see in that big and then so since they then they pad the book with the other stuff um Anyway, then this is then this is uh, now this is actually a this was a collector's edition that was put out by uh, did I get these before or after I think I got this after Alvin last sold Eric Publishing to Book Publishing Company and then uh, before I put out the annotated version of it i was uh, i was actually even on the on my website i was selling the uh, the Eric publishing edition as a, as a retailer and uh, and we were we were selling these and this is just uh interesting it doesn't have the uh it it's it's more like the original it, it doesn't have uh let's see yeah it just has the Eric stuff I, I don't even see any of the none no none of the Fred Hirsch uh or actually no it does have a Fred Hirsch I was gonna say I thought it did but none of the Teresa Mitchell articles um so and I got other I got other stuff another another thing now this is this is an old copy of the speak at the stomach see these little, little little booklets this is something that I've had for quite a long time but recently which should have got more organized where i did this um in the mail i I just got the the definite cure of chronic constipation that's like this you know this little book form uh booklet format another thing to check out is now this is actually really cool this is where i got that picture of fred hirsch if you've seen on some of the articles this is Eret Health Club News. This is an old edition, August 1935. This is uh, an old newsletter put together by Fred Hirsch. Uh, and he kept this going for years. He kept the, the Eret Health Club rolling. And people, I, uh, I don't know how much it cost to be a part of the health club back then. When I joined in the 2000s, uh, Alvin was uh it was 25 dollars a year and you had access to an online uh uh forum as well as and that's actually why where, where i met uh, ann osborne was in <laughs> it was in that original forum and uh you know i met uh, a number of people you know that that was real cool uh up, up in there uh but and he can conti- and, and alvin continued to put out an actual newsletter that came to my house. And so I, I got some of those old ones back there of the actual newsletter that they would mail to the house. But this is, this is real interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, editorial by Fred Hirsch. Man's progress has been a stupendous achievement. The wonderful San Diego exp- exposition uh, now being held is the go- in the gorgeous setting of Balboa Park overlooking San Diego Bay. So they was, was talking about, uh, what's this? Uh, is both in California. It's both spectacular and arresting, and it is my sincere wish that all Eric Health Club enthusiasts may find an opportunity of enjoying this most uh, convincing monument of man's achievement. Uh, 
And so there's a couple, here's an article, hot weather can be comfortable. <laughs> and uh, Eric membership benefits many. Uh, the study, the study table. Uh, where, where's the beginning of that? Oh, the study table. Everywhere one goes, there are visible signs of intense nervousness in almost every person. Tightly clenched hands, drumming, restless, uh, jerky movements, and a hundred other signs of nervousness. Increasing habits of using such stimulants as smoking, drug taking, alcohol, tea, coffee, and so on, to, together with the extreme hurry and rush of business life and home life aggravate these nervous conditions. And these symptoms each year seem to increase at an alarming rate. So this is a whole article on nervousness and these uh, stimulants. Uh, I mean, it's just, I mean, just, just even in this, this is just, just good stuff. Hollywood stars drink health. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a history, I'm a history geek. So I like this, I like all this stuff. Um, so, and I appreciate, you know, I really thank uh, Alvin Last for, you know, sending <laughs> sending me all that. You know, he just he just knew that I was someone that was really into Eric and uh, and I was talking to him and asking a lot of questions back. I don't know, first time I talked with him might have been, I don't even know, I'm in 2008 maybe. But I had communicated with him in the forum and by the way, a lot of the conversations that I had in the forum are in Spirit Speaks. Uh, as I took uh, it's a lot of those initial conversations that I had were very uh, fit nicely for someone that's learning about the mucus's diet because there was, although it was the Eric club. There was a lot of people talking about stuff that had nothing to do with Eric. And a lot of people had never really met somebody that was really truly owned the title and label of someone. It's like, I'm, I'm an Eritus, you know, I practice a mucus diet healing system, uh, unapologetically. We, you know, a lot of people, they were, uh, some, some of the, some of the folks, not everybody, you know, but there were, I got the impression that, that a lot of folks were kind of, you know, they respected Eric's work, but they were really kind of more into the, uh, you know, the uh, nutrition theories and raw foodist theory, all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, so yeah, this is, I don't know, it, it's just the hi history has always been something that uh that fascinates me you know it's like the, the stories we tell the way that things develop the way that things evolve you know the way that things transition from one uh you know permutation to the next is uh is always very very interesting to me um the thing that i really wanted to show you guys that i was so excited about was uh, I have a draft done of the of of what I call the Spira's notes. Now uh, I'm gonna show you guys a uh, I was gonna say by by a raise of hand, uh, who knows what Cliff notes are or Cliff's notes. So for a while I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to have a mucusless diet version of cliff notes so here's some pictures of cliff notes and basically really classic all these classic books they have cliff notes of everything you know old testament all the classic uh plays and novels and everything and now in school i never really got real deep in the cliff notes uh that wasn't for me that wasn't the best way to study and i knew better than to try to only use cliff notes and uh and, and which a lot of, that's what a lot of people do and that's why that was another thing i was kind of like i don't know about cliff notes because 
you're not supposed to just rely on cliff notes and I, and I got a couple you know, sitting here, but you're, you're supposed to read the original work and then use this as a reference to sort of go back over the work and, and, it, and it gives a little bit more context and it focuses in on uh, the, the main points and that kind of stuff. And so, so the way that I study was just more of I kind of I like I got to take my own notes because that's how I really learned. If I take my own notes from the original book, and if I did anything, I would listen to the book. So if I could find a book, uh, an unabridged audio book version of something, then I would listen to it and read along and take notes at the same time. And so take my own make my own outlines. So, uh, but w the, the more I thought, I was like, man, I really need to outline, you know, so, okay. So I annotated the Bugas's diet, but now, uh, just for me personally, just, I would like a, uh, uh, originally I was thinking something this size, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, man, I really, I want something bigger. You know, I want something that's kind of, that's big enough for me to put on a lectern and I could go it, it just just use it even though a lot of the stuff is in my head already it's it's nice to be able to reference or, or read direct quotes or just have the whole lesson laid out already essentially they're there let's like lecture notes you know if you if you're preparing a lecture you want to distill down the content uh, i mean there's different types of lectures so you can give a lecture just off top of your head type but if you have a sp specific content that you're trying to teach then and you want to systematize and organize it then you want to put together some kind of uh some kind of outline or you know some people do the the card uh, use index cards and things and you know just basically have keywords on it that'll trigger your your memory of okay i want to talk about this now but i'm more of an outline type of person so uh let me show you what what we're working with here so now this is i have it in uh, this is a draft. So this, this is still a little ways out from being released because I, I don't think I want to release it until uh, until the e-course is done. And so as we speak, I'm working on that. And I know I've been saying that since 2014, but I but I really am. And I'm, I'm uh, doing I'm a, a, you know shooting video right now and all that kind of stuff. But this is a Spira's notes. So these are like literally my notes. These are my notes <laughs> that I would use for lectures and uh, uh, classroom discussions, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Spears notes the official Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course study guide. So that's really the 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 true intention is it goes along with the e-course because with the e-course I'm going to take people step by step through everything, just through every part of the book all this stuff that people totally miss and sleep on and, and covering all the questions uh even in more depth than the uh, uh than the annotations you know this is just another way to hit it because i find that to for people to really learn things it's it's important to hit things from different ways so you read it but then it's good to hear it then it's good to see it then it's good to see it a different way, hear it a different way. When once you've gone through content like that and, and you've had it exposed to you a number of different ways, you start to own that content. And that's what I want to see people do is own Eric's message, not just have a lit because what's happening now, and, and there's this this new trend. And I'm gonna change because this, this is an important point that I want to make. I'm seeing this trend and of and, and I don't know if it's a millennial thing or if it's a postmodernism thing or what it is, but there's this trend of wanting to study a little bit of everything, but never really dig down deep and plant your roots in one thing. And I'm not saying to that, that if you dedicate yourself and put your roots down in one thing that you can't at that point, look at what other people have to say. It's just uh, it, it. what ends up happening is kind of a jack of all trade kind of vibe where 
everybody is sort of sampling a little bit of information from everybody. And uh, so I'm not seeing enough people getting deep into whatever it is. So I'm not, and I, cause I'm not even saying that it, you just have to do that with Arnold Eric's work. If, uh, whatever it is, if you, if it's Dr. Morris or for Dr. Sabi or Leah Africa, whoever it is, I want to talk to people that that's so deep into their work, into their studies. Uh, now, of course you have to, you do have to pick wisely. And my recommendation of course is to, if you're, if you're so moved to do so to get deep like that with, uh, with Arnold Eric's work. But to me, it, it makes sense to have a foundation because most people have one, whether they realize it or not. And a lot of people that I work with, their foundation is is raw foodism. That's they sort of see the world, even if they're not eating raw. It's like they, they have a paradigm that's based on a raw food is kind of viewpoint. Now, I've in working with like hundreds of these people at this point. Uh, I've found I find that particular grounding to be uh, uh, to be limiting when you especially when you start dealing with the mucus's diet healing system because it prevents you from really being able to say okay let me let me do it let me do it air its way because air its way includes cooked foods and so if what so what I see is people trying to combine. The two, they're, so they're saying, okay, air it, and and, and they, they'll take a piece of air it's ideal, which isn't even what he was saying to do, but they'll say, okay, raw fruit. Air it says the ideal food is raw fruit, so I'm going to try to eat nothing but raw fruit. Did you even read the book? Air it didn't say to do that. <laughs> There's a whole section on transition diet that, 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 that talk about uh, you know, raw food fanaticism and, and things like that to, and, and to avoid that, you know, or f all fruit, why all fruit diets fail. Uh, so, but, but that's the thing there. If, if you're so rooted in that particular mindset, when you come to the mucus's diet, it's like you're bringing that. And so you're going to see the mucus's diet and pick up on things uh, and interpret things from that lens. So what I'm trying to do with the things that I put out is show you what an Arnold Eret lens and in, in, in interpretation is. Now I'm not saying my uh, my interpretation of people, my colleagues that that it's uh, uh, by far the that it's the only legitimate interpretation. I've never said anything like that. I've always encouraged people to check out what other people have to say, but I would say that it makes sense to to consider when, when we're considering multiple viewpoints it makes sense to consider the viewpoints of people that really have rooted their self into Eric's work uh, because we're not always we're not in agreement i know people that have rooted themselves into Eric's work and we have d disagreements on different interpretations of what Eric had to say and all that kind of stuff that's it's normal. That's how you know it's supposed to be. But there is a difference between people that have really rooted themselves in uh, uh, and developed a, a lens, seeing the world through through a lens really inspired by Eric's work. Uh, and if you're you know you're trying to take take bits and pieces, like well, I'm gonna take this this piece from Eric, and then let me take this piece from Dr. Morris, this piece from say you know I don't know. I'm just I'm seeing that that's having consequences that 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 type of approach. Uh, so my my proposition is, and what I hope to do with the e course is to uh, allow you enough time to spend with the with the information, you know, with the mucus's diet and Eris work to meditate on it, because that part of the process of rooting yourself is something is to really meditate on the information. And that's what I'm not seeing. I'm not see, seeing as many, and, and I'm starting to see it more, but to see people really, really meditating and think about it, because there's a lot of people that do all, all these sorts of meditations and the breath work and all this kind of stuff. What does it mean to meditate on information, to 
uh, uh, to immerse yourself into a topic so deeply that it becomes a part of you. You know, the uh, if you go to college, that's really what you're supposed to do. It's a lot of the you you have to deal with all these different topics, but the job of the professor is actually to for that short period of time for those two or three months that they have you is to set something up to immerse you into a, a subject matter that you might be foreign to uh and, and get you deeper and deeper and then and if you keep taking courses in that particular uh discipline then you get even deeper and deeper and so it's always about depth you know depth of knowledge uh depth of of wisdom you know and and using you know what whatever vehicle master that vehicle you know as opposed to just knowing about the vehicle you know or just passively it's like oh that's you know that's a good vehicle and that's a that's cute and uh, oh, i got a little bit it's like man immerse yourself you know pick pick one and 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 spend a year spend five years on one and then you know spend five years then spend five years on something you know something else but uh i don't know so that's my opinion on that and uh uh let's see we ch checking out some of the um oh thank you uh yeah holistic pilgrim pilgrimage uh so uh so yeah so let me uh kind of go through some of these pages here because this is kind of a cool little thing here that they have for uh the the place that i publish my books through uh there's the title page and we got all this part the contents and this kind of kind of came together and i formatted all this myself now i still have to send this off to an editor so there's still mistakes in here and that kind of stuff it's uh it's got got some ways to go before it's ready for uh for release but Let's see here, a note to the reader. Uh, these notes are not intended and have not been prepared to serve as a substitute for Professor Arnold Eric's Mucus's Diet Healing System lectures based on the content of the book or for classroom discussion and analysis of the text. This edition of Spears Notes is specifically designed to accompany Professor Spears' uh, Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course, Keys for Mastering a Mucus-Free Life, Although it is primarily based on Spears' annotated, revised, and edited edition of Professor Arnold Eric's Mucus Diet Healing System, it may act as an apt companion to any edition of the original work. Inspired by the famous Cliff's Notes uh, series of study guides, the aim is to summarize, outline, analyze, and provide review materials that cover the most important points of the mucusless diet healing system text. And uh, let's see, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll read this. this is my, my introduction's kind of long, but I, th I think it's, it's, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> if I say so myself, like it's one of those things where I, I was, I was like, oh, this, this turned out kind of nice. But uh, so how to use this study guide? Uh, I have a quote from Eric at the top. So this book represents an outline of the serious nature of my work and, it also appeals to you for help in carrying it through as the greatest deed you can perform upon which depends not only your future destiny but that of a suffering unhappy humankind on the verge of physical and mental collapse arnold Eret and the mucus of diet healing system so that's that's a call to arms you know it's a call to action that it's it's not enough to just get yourself together we have to uh we have to share this information and so uh then then I, then i come in greetings brothers and sisters part of my life's mission is to help carry uh arnold Eric's message forth to people of the 21st century many of whom are in desperate need of his wisdom in the early 1900s, Eret found answers to some of humanity's most difficult questions, and for over 100 years, too few people have had the privilege of hearing his message. The intention of this study guide is to play a major role in changing this. Billions of people around the world can and will benefit from Eret's message, but the necessary educational tools must be developed and made available for health seekers and health educators alike. 
this edition of Spira's Notes, the official Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course study guide, is first and foremost a companion to uh, Professor Arnold Eric's Mucus's Diet Healing System, annotated, revised, and edited by Professor Spira. This guide is not meant to replace reading or listening to the audiobook of the original Mucus's Diet text. The intention is to facilitate further study for students of my Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course, as well as students of Arnold Eric's work in general. Many students of the e-course uh, will not only gain the tools to become lifelong practitioners of the diet, but also health educators inspired to share Eric's message with their families, friends, patients, and students. Each lesson of the Mucus's Diet book is broken down into uh, several corresponding components in this guide, including lesson summaries, outlines, glossaries, review questions, and in some cases, a list of books to consider for further reading. Students of the e-course uh, are asked to first read and listen to the full text of each lesson from the annotated, revised, and edited Mucus's Diet, then watch my short video discussions of the lesson, uh, and then finally use this book to review the main points from the aforementioned. If you follow this simple formula, you will develop a firm grasp of Eret's methods and be empowered to move forward with your healing journey confidently. For educators, this book provides resources that will allow you to share Eret's message more efficiently, uh, the lay, uh, more efficiently. The layout and formatting of the text makes it the perfect companion for leading informal roundtable discussions, giving lectures, preparing uh, your own lecture notes, and designing seminars. Each lesson starts with the summary on odd numbered pages followed by the outline on the, on, the, uh, on the following even numbered pages. In most cases, the entire outline fits on two or three pages. This will help uh, discussion leaders and lecturers use the outline as a guide without the need to constantly turn pages or skim through the full mucus's diet text for main points during their presentations. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. A number of ancient wisdom traditions teach that we humans feel our best and are most at peace with the universe when we receive for the sake of sharing. When we obtain knowledge, love, resources, strength, wisdom, freedom, etc., it is a universal law that we feel our best when we can share some bit of it with others in ways that enhance their lives. My hope is that this study guide enables you to effortlessly receive and understand Eret's message with such proficiency that you are not only able to transform your own health for the better, but feel so wonderful that you ha have to share this information with others. Share freely and without judgment as you never know who will discover Eret's work and get it and begin their own journey back to the paradisical lifestyle that Arnold Eret envisioned for humanity. Peace, love, and breath. Professor Spear, July 2017. So that's my introduction. And I, I literally wrote that today. <laughs> that was the last thing. I'm like putting the finishing touches on this thing. And so that, that came out today. And uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, so then just to i won't keep on reading forever but uh so i start off with arnold Eric's biography so yeah, so each each lesson has a summary and, and i always start the summary when i said the odd number page so the summary starts on the on the right hand side just like a chap the uh, in in a lot of books the chapters will start on that on the right hand side uh, then I got the summary. So this is a summary of Arnold Eric's biography. Then we have the outline. And uh, so this outlines uh, Arnold Eric's biography. So this is the biogra biography from the uh, annotated uh, Mucus's Diet book. Then, uh, and so you can just kind of see how that's laid out here. Then next, there is a glossary for each section. So in here I define 
uh, Bright's disease because that comes up and sometimes people don't know like, well, what's it's because some of these words will just be used and and it may or may not be explained what it is. So it's a, you know, Bright's disease, a historical classification of kidney diseases that would be described as acute or chronic uh, nephritis in modern medical uh, terminology. And uh, then I talk about Fred Hirsch. Now, this was interesting because I, I did a, a little more research yesterday. And I, so I got his his dates uh, was born 1888 and died 1979. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll actually read this just because I think some of you will find it interesting. So after his diagnosis of uh, necrosis of the Achilles caused by uh, bone infections in both heels, Hirsch attended a lecture of Arnold Eretz in California. Hirsch, who knew uh, some German, helped Eret with some English words he was having trouble with. And following the lecture, the two spoke and Eret befriended him, vowing to help him heal. After an extended fast monitored by Eret, Hirsch healed and was no longer in need of his crutches. Hirsch soon became Eret's business manager when Eret, uh, when Eret, Diet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's mistakes doing this. Uh, when Eric died in 1922, Hirsch continued uh, to run Eric Publishing Company, uh, the the Eric Health Club. Published the club's newsletter and ran a popular health retreat named Highland Springs Resort. And uh, so, it actually need to, I need to create a Wikipedia page for Fred Hirsch and just kind of do a full biography on Hirsch and, and get him up there because, you know, Benedict Lust has it one and I regard Fred Hirsch, you know, as far as if you comparing people that have really had a profound impact on the world of natural healing and naturopathy and health, uh, it, it, it doesn't get much more influential than Fred Hirsch because just for the fact of, keeping Eric's message out there and alive. Uh, and, uh, and there's some interesting stories with it, that Highland Springs resort. I wrote a little bit about that in uh, a blog article called mucus, mucus free, the original vegan diet, where I kind of get into the history of veganism and show how Eric was left out of that history, which he shouldn't have been. You know, when people talk about veganism, uh, Eric should be, in terms of the history, he should be considered like, oh, the, here's the, one of the first books that is about transitioning to a plant based. Not now the mucus is died healing system, as I have to say, the healing system does have non vegan items in it for transitional purposes. But by definition, um, uh, by uh, Eric's definition of a mucusless diet, by the time you get to mucusless, that is a plant-based proposition. So there, <laughs> I said it. But uh, the only <laughs> there's just this controversy, uh, less so in uh, amongst English speakers, but in, among Spanish speakers. Uh, there, there's a controversy about that, and, and there were some people that were angry that I called uh, mucus free the original vegan diet when I said, Well, mucus free is by definition plant based in a, in in a vegan diet. Uh, the uh, it, I didn't say mucusless diet healing system, the original vegan diet, mucus free, and you know, which Aaron coined that concept in that term, uh, and, and in a you know mucus free diet is a is a vegan just uh on accident didn't mean to be it didn't mean to be because the word vegan wasn't invented yet but it uh it was and it's really one of the is the early one of the earliest if not the earliest book on plant-based diet that that really had had some some impact in in staying power uh that's still published today so then uh, also in the glossary to this part, I have the back to nature renaissance and uh, I need to uh, do some new. I mean, I have videos on, on some of these topics, uh, but I need to do some new ones. So now next there's review questions 
And uh, so for this, what is the name of the so-called incurable disease that Arnold Eretz suffered from? And these questions are they're, they're supposed to be easy. But as you go through, you might notice that some questions might stump you, even if you had just read the article uh, or read the lesson like, dang, did and you'd be like, yeah, I remember something about that. So they're just comprehension questions. They're not meant to be difficult. Um, but 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 think but that but think about how much more knowledgeable you'll sound if you know right off the top of your head if uh, you say what what's the name of the so-called incurable disease that Arnold Eretz suffered from? You can say Bright's disease. Because I don't think I've ever heard anybody else utter the words Bright's disease except Bright's disease except me. So now you'll be able to you say Arnold Eretz suffered from Bright's disease, you know, which is inflammation of the kidneys. And, uh, you know, it just gives you that, that little edge and you're uh, uh, you know, comprehending is a little deeper than uh, number two. What prevented Eretz from traveling back to Europe when he visited uh, the U.S. in 1914? People that know their history, even without reading this, you could probably uh, surmise uh, World War One had something to do with that. Uh, and in the back of the book are all of my answers. And uh, and so maybe we'll, we'll take a look at that. But so you, you can go to, to check my answers to all of the review questions throughout the whole thing. You can go to the back and you can see what I had to say. Uh, number three, Arnold Eret was a leader in what some historians call the back to nature renaissance, true or false. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's a real easy one. <laughs> but but again, that's another thing I don't hear enough people talking about. And so a lot of these questions are just things I want to hear people talking about more. You know, back to nature renaissance. We we got to we got to understand that there's a there's a historical context of what we're doing. You know, this raw foodism and fruit diet and mucus's diet and all this this stuff didn't just get start and spring up in in the 2010s or 2000s or the 90s or 80s or i mean you got to go back to the 1880s and the 1870s uh to get to the origin of what we're dealing with and, and that extended legacy and it's important to, to understand that so if you can answer even though yeah you can say true but then it's like okay well what what's some details of the back to nature renaissance you know so this could easily turn into long questions like i said this was just the general uh general comprehension questions they get a little bit deeper as as they go and toward the end i i do have one essay question that is uh that there's no right answer for it it's basically you how do you feel or what do you how, how do you interpret uh, a particular thing that, that Eric said then uh lesson one general introductory principles again we have a. Uh, the uh, uh the summary so i'll read just this one summary so you can see what i did with the summaries and so in lesson one professor arnold Eret offers a general introduction to his mucus diet healing system first he defines constipation as the foundation of human illness and explains that it comes from uneliminated unnatural food substances accumulated since childhood second he proclaims that his mucus diet healing system is the answer to healing human illness and that many declared cure uh, incurable patients could be saved through his practice through its practice third Eric defines the mucusless diet as a diet consisting of all kinds of raw and cooked fruits starchless vegetables and raw and cooked green leafy vegetables the mucusless diet as a healing system however is described as an eloquent system that employs progressively changing menus that move from mucus heavy, uh, 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 from a mucus heavy diet toward a mucus free diet, as well as individually advised forms of fasting in, in alignment with the individual needs of each practitioner. Finally, Eret identifies the human body as an elastic pipe system and observes that the average person's diet is never fully eliminated which results in toxic residues accumulated uh, accumulating in the body this toxic residue uh, ultimately becomes the foundation of human illness Eret asserts that his healing system is the only way to remo remove uh, intelligently and carefully the waste uh, thereby establishing the internal environment in which the body heals itself and uh, so that's 
the, uh, the the introduction. And so each lesson has a short introduction like that. Some of them are shorter because the lesson is shorter. Uh, some might be a little bit longer, but uh, that uh, you know, I try to get something that even if if you're in a if you're leading a roundtable discussion, you could somebody could just read that just like okay here here's this here's the introduction and then to the lesson and then let's have a discussion about it or uh then next you can move on to the outline so this is lesson one outline and you can see this uh just just basically breaks down the uh different parts of the lesson uh what is constipation the first and foremost, you know, every every disease, despite the name, it is known by men, uh, known by of which is known as constipation. So where I could, I tried to condense things. Every once in a while, I'll put direct quotes in there from Eric, and those are good to read. Uh, still thinking about a, a way to maybe highlight those or some. I don't, I don't know if I'll do that or not, but uh, to highlight some of the quotes so that they stick out a little bit if if somebody wants to read them. But I think they, they stick out. You can see them. Then uh, quite a I think a, the glossary is pretty heavy for this first one. We got the uh, constipation definition of mucus. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is one of the longer glossaries. Uh, get a lot of stuff out of the way here. Mucus theory, mucusless, mucus forming, blood, toxemia, vitality, naturopathy, natural hygiene, medical science, fasting, disease, and uh, the word practitioner, which Eric does use and. And we use quite a bit. Then uh, we have the review questions. Uh, how does Arnold Eret define disease? How does Arnold Eret define constipation? Uh, about how many pounds of uneliminated fecal matter is in most humans? According to Eret, can humans be healed by using special menus or radical fasts? I need to put a, uh, a uh, question mark there. Well, no, I either need to put a question mark there, or get rid of the can. According to Eric, I, I probably need to get rid of the can. According to Eric, humans uh, may be healed by using special menus or radical fast. True or false? Since it's a true or false question. According to Eric, what is nature's infallible law and omnipotent healing process? Uh, number six, Eric says, whatever simple reason cannot grasp is humbug, however scientific it may sound. What do you think is meant by this statement? So this is a little bit more of a, of a sort of a critical response where it's, it's up to you. What do you what do you think? And then you can compare what you think to what, to what I think, which is in the back of the book. And then seven, why is fasting and the mucus diet often not successful in many cases? And so these are just, just you know, gentle little questions there. So maybe uh, and then we so each lesson is basically that format. Uh, so what I'll do now is maybe go to the go to the end uh, and let's let this sort of do its thing there. I'll, I'll go to the end and we'll take a look at the um, at the answers. So I'll try to look at the review. Okay, let, me, let me bring it up here real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay. I still need to add that. Okay. So you'll see it's one, one part that I still need to add. I, I need to add the, the glossary for, uh, or the, the, the glossary for the message to Eratist here, which I haven't, haven't done yet. Review questions and glossary. That's one, one thing I have left to do here, but, uh, the review questions. So this is kind of what my answers look like. The review questions for lesson one, uh, how does Arnold Eret define disease? Eret affirms that all disease or sickness, no matter what name names uh, given to them by medical scientists, is constipation. Thus, Eret defines disease as constipation. Number two, how does Arnold Eret define constipation? Eret defines constipation as a clogging up of the entire pipe system of the human body with waste derived from undigested, unaliminated, and unnatural food substances accumulated since childhood. Number three, about how many pounds of uneliminated fecal matter is in most humans? Eret affirms that the average person has as much as 10 pounds of uneliminated feces in the bowels, continually poisoning their bloodstreams. 
Number four, according to Eric, can humans be healed by using special menus or uh, radically long fast? True or false? Why or why not? Uh, false. Eric asserts that it is wrong and ignorant to believe that an illness can be healed using special menus or radically long fast. He explains that this is because each patient must apply the systematic methods of his healing system and that special considerations must be made for each individual case. Five, according to Eric, what is nature's uh, infallible law and omnipotent healing process? Eric asserts that fasting is uh, nature's only and infallible law. He adds that the mucus's diet uh, also is governed by the principles of this law. Six, Eric says, whatever simple reason cannot grasp is humbug, however scientific it may sound. What do you think by this statement? Well, Eric's aforementioned statement of wisdom is intended to empower his readers to think for themselves and not fall prey to the complex uh, nomenclatures and figures used by medical scientists and dietitians. Eric implies that Although humans in the West are acclimatized to unconditionally respect uh, 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 the complicated language uh, and perceived authority of medical and naturopathic practitioners, most of them are lost when it comes to helping people heal themselves of diet-related illness. It's uh, yeah, my answer. Uh, why is fasting in the mucus diet often not successful in many cases? Uh, Eric explains that fasting and the mucus diet are often unsuccessful because one, they are not used systematically in accordance with the condition of the patient. Two, the inexperienced person that experiments with the mucus diet or fasting does not know enough about the uh, about the eliminative process. Uh, how long it requires, uh, how to make gradual changes to one's diet, and when it uh, and when it me uh, and when it needs to cleanse uh, or what it means to cleanse the body of decades of waste. Without knowledge of the healing process, experimenters may uh, make wrong assumptions that lead to problematic decisions. A la. Uh, What's his name? My, his name went out of my went out of my mind at the moment. I'm I'm thinking of uh, you got Stanley Bass, but I'm thinking of uh, the uh, the guy that played Steve Jobs that that did that publicity stunt where he tried to eat all fruit and then uh, Ashton Kutcher has his name. Uh, let's see. So anyway, that is, uh, that's, uh, that's that, you know, that's, that's the, uh, the, uh, the, the guide book here. And, uh, so yeah, so I don't know. I just got kind of excited today because it, it's once, once these things start looking like a book, uh, cause for the longest time it was, I, I was just working on it and it was looking like you know, not looking like a book. <laughs> it was just looking like a, you know, just a bunch of, a bunch of notes. Uh, and so now it's, you know, starting to, starting to take on the appearance of a book. So I, I'm uh, happy about that. Now, I really do hope that it will bene benefit uh, people. I mean, this isn't something that I think is going to get, you know, super like, popular and be a whole lot of people get it and stuff. But for the handful of people, I mean, it's like, I'm happy of, there's, there's about five or six people, you know, 10 people that I know would really, really want this, like, cause they're, uh, cause they, they want, they would use it, you know, like I said, to, to be able to walk in to a round table discussion and you got all the notes here. It's like, you know, you don't have to be going through the book and trying to find notes. And if you got your book all noted up and all kinds of stuff, which is great, but it's nice to have something that you are, that where all the notes are already there and you can just go like boom, boom, boom. Here's a note. You got some questions, and then you can start making your own questions, and uh, and, and just really start to articulate this information in in a in a in a way that uh, 
uh, that really focuses on, on Era's work and, and we don't get into uh, the, the uh, you know, meditating, as I said earlier, you know, a meditation on, on Era's, uh, on Era's work. And um, so, uh, so yeah, so that is, uh, that's what I've been doing. That's, <laughs> People you know, say, "Where's where's Spira at?" Well, I'm probably working on something, and uh, but I've, I've I've enjoyed this. Uh, the other, like I said, the uh, the other project working on is the the physical fitness. Uh, look forward to uh, releasing that soon as well, and uh, and I'm still still working on on the menu book. I'm I'm working on that as well. That's that's a part of this 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 push for me. This is just a push. Uh, this period of of creating stuff, you know, creating because first and foremost, I feel best when I'm creating something. You know, I'm a creator, and so I like whether it's a book or if it's music or if it's YouTube videos or if it's whatever it is. If, uh, if it's a dissertation, you know, I just I like to create things, and so. Uh, but the process of creating things can be an emotional process. You know, a lot of a lot of my emotions go into the things that I'm working on. And so you can uh, when you're working on big projects, there's ups and downs. And some days you, you're pushing yourself. You know, you really don't feel like working on it and you got to keep pushing yourself. You're like, man, you better you know, don't you know, it is. It's, so it's so it's a challenge and it's a you know internal the internal dialogue that you have with yourself and, and just what it takes to finish these kind of things. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's one thing to be working on something and to say, yeah, I'm working on it or, or sort of have this grand vision, but to finish, uh, you know, always, they say always be closing, you know, to, to finish these kind of projects. And my thing is I tend to misjudge, when that's why i get to i don't even i'm not even saying when it's gonna be done i don't know i'm just working uh, on it every day but uh I, I i have a tendency to really misjudge i i i have trouble being able to figure out when something's gonna be done uh because it's it's hard to say and with some of the things because some of these things i'm doing now i planned on having done a couple years ago and uh you know, we have personal lives too. And sometimes things happen in the part in your personal life that prevents you from, uh, getting things done and, uh, and, and, or other projects, you know, I've had to finish my dissertation, which, uh, as I graduated last year, uh, with, with the PhD, you know, so that was something where I kind of put a lot of the mucus free life projects on hold for about six months, you know, and I was really just, okay, let's finish this thing. And, um, so, so for me, that's that's where it's at. It's just really about uh, creating, you know, putting these things out here, and uh, and uh, you know, for me, that's fun. You know, it's fun to create and to uh, and talk about the mucus diet. Uh, you know, help people try to just realize things and details and stuff that think of th uh, that they hadn't thought about before. Think about things in a different way. Uh, you think about see things through a different lens that uh, you might not have ever thought about it like that before. And um, so let me see. Diet because they were see if there's any questions over here in the in the uh, live chat. And I want well, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys that's is on here the live chat, or if you're maybe you're watching this uh, after it was live. But you know, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, plugging in and all the support that you give and the support that you give each other uh it's it's just important because uh, <laughs> what's the, the 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 old saying you know we, we all we got <laughs> you know we all we got you know we are the we were we have to support each other in this because uh what we're doing is is so alternative to the status quo. Uh, I mean, it's alternative to what's considered alternative in the mainstream veganism, even though we I look at ve veganism is totally mainstream at this point. But in the larger society, it's still it's still viewed, uh, it's still viewed by a lot of people as 
a uh, is an alternative, you know, than all you know, an alternative lifestyle, which is stupid to think that or to say it like that because it's it it is a uh, uh, a little closer. But then there, you know, and we need to do the live show with Brother Air, and and uh, he he's got some things he wants to say to the garden variety vegans. You know, there's a lot of unhealthiness that's going on right now. It's it's like the vegan diet is getting as more and more people get into it and as it becomes more mainstream it's getting uh infinitely more unhealthy to the point where it's like man, you might as well just go to just go to mcdonald's and get a you know it, i mean it's getting it's getting bad you know uh some some of the things that i'm seeing on some of the vegan sites so again trying to just get this message out to say it's, it's not just good enough to be plant-based you know it's not enough to just uh, uh, and we're not saying that you had to you know, cut all stuff out cold turkey. It's just just understand how to use food as a tool to evolve and move toward cleaner and cleaner eating habits. Um, and ultimately, when you do get sick, uh, or as we would say, go through an elimination, you know what to do. It's not a mystery. Uh, you know, fasting is, is, is not a mystery. Uh, eating mucus free is not a mystery. Uh, it's, it's, it shouldn't be a big deal when you, uh, when you eat mucus free and you heal yourself or something, you know, it's like, that shouldn't even be like considered miraculous. That's as Aaron's message. That's, that's what it is. It's, it's health. It's, uh, how the universe works, how our bodies operate. It's, it's just, that's, that's, that's how it goes and so uh let me see if there see if there was any questions over here can't wait uh, hey what's up bo ye so you can't wait for cliff notes yeah uh let's see in holistic uh pilgrimage i appreciate your kind words um let's see Thanks, Professor Anne Marie. I have the book and I'm almost finished reading it. Uh, it's beautiful. That is great. Um, so, so that was really what I wanted to, you know, just share a little bit, a little show and tell. I got all, all my, you know, all my great books, and uh, I need to need to get a proper. But I, it, it's a, uh, you know, I got all these these old books from the twenties and. And, but I, but I keep going through them. You know, I, I should probably seal them up and something. But but I, I'm using them because there is stuff in here that's interesting. Because each edition is different, and so I'm trying to look through and find the different changes and and really learn about what, when were certain changes made and why. You know, another example is in these early editions of. Uh, of the mucus's diet and, the, and we're going back to the vegetarian section again but the uh fred hirsch includes using hard-boiled egg in one of his recipes by 1953 that had been eliminated you know the hard-boiled egg was out of there everything protose was out of there uh which is another thing that, that i kind of clarify what that's about because uh, the original book recommended using protose which was an early uh, I mean, the equivalent today would be really uh, either the Satan, uh, weak gluten stuff, or a soy product, uh, you know, some kind of basically like a meat substitute for transitional purposes. Um, but uh, but yeah, but that that was something that you know I never never used, and but there are some people that have really focused in on Fred Hirsch's editions of in in the vegetarian section and they have created a dietary ver like basically they created a version of mucus's diet that's I, I call it fred hirsch's mucus's diet healing system because much of it is ba uh, is based on the additions of fred hirsch you know this uh, those men those menus and recipes that hirsch specifically added and um and that's cool for the beginning of one's transition, but uh, but what I'm seeing that I think is problematic is is fear of 
being mucusless for periods of time or fear of uh, having periods of, you know, certain kinds of, of, you know, fasting, even if it's just by the book, you know, two to three day fast, uh, animas, be, be water anima, you know, just by the book, people are, uh, there's a segment of people that are scared to deal with stuff just by, by the original, you know, original er errors, original words, uh, you know, the fruit, uh, it'll go periods of, and periods of time, you know, Eric never said to go longer than two days, uh, or several, two or three days without having some kind of fruit in your, in your meal, the vegetable days were used. If you're going through something where there's a lot of poisons in your system, that's being recirculating. You used to take pharmaceutical medications or did illegal drugs or whatever it was. And that stuff started to recirculate. And then as Eric says, it might be dangerous to, to keep going on all fruit through that. So to slow that down and to buffer, you we really want to buffer those poisons. That's where you would get into uh, some pretty heavy vegetable meals and maybe really lay off the fruit for a minute and deal with those vegetables for several days, you know, but that's the longest that Eric ever recommended to go without fruit. Uh, but another piece, and again, you know, Eric's thing is so it's like, okay, that's the longest to go without fruit, but he also recommended using cooked fruit. And if you follow the menus for the first month, you would not have raw fruit for the first month of practicing a mucus diet. You would, uh, your fruit meals would consist of baked or stewed fruits uh you can you, you can kind of look at that and check it out what, I, what i'm talking about now i'm not saying you necessarily have to do that because eric wasn't saying that you had to follow these th those suggested menus verbatim they were uh, uh an educational tool to say okay how how do you combine your foods how do you start to think in terms of you know where you're where you understand the principles enough to where you can create your own recipes and you create your own menus that fit within the context of the mucus's diet healing system so it's like here's these examples uh but they are also perfectly good examples to experiment with and to just go down and say okay first couple of weeks and, and to see what to see what they do you know to see what it is so uh there's a lot of, a lot of flexibility which is difficult for some people because some people want it to be more specific. You know, they want it, they want it to be, well, tell me what to exactly what to eat at what time. Uh, and I do offer menu planning, uh, services where uh, for people that want that, that want my opinion on, okay, eat this at this time, you know, I'll, I'll do that. But, um, but I, I, I like to see, and what I would rather see real people really, learn how to think like Eric, you know, or think like the mucus diet, you know, the way that it's laid out in there to where you can, where you're confident that you're putting together menus uh, and eating and combining foods in such a way that aligns with the principles of the mucus diet healing system. Um, let's see. Is there anything else popped up here? See, is it, is it normal? Uh, this is a question from Ann. Let's see. Is it normal as I have been transitioning and just having one small cooked meal like quinoa and veggies? Uh, I am getting turned off by cooked foods and feel too full and uh, heavy after consuming them. Well, first and foremost, there should be there should be no meal that's like 100% cooked uh unless it's there's a couple fruit meals that could be 100 percent like cooked or stewed baked fruit but if you're talking about vegetables that should always be combined with raw so my standard vegetable meal is the is, is my my kind like my combination salad uh, the, the <laughs> there's like two people that know that know why i'm laughing the, uh, the 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 spear of soft salad combination salad <laughs> oh man but uh so I have my salad 
but if and then if I have cooked vegetables, I like to eat the I start with the raw. So it's like I start with the raw salad first and then maybe fit about if I eat about 50 percent of the salad, then I start to incorporate the cooked vegetables. But I'm going to have more raw salad than I am going to have the cooked vegetable item. Uh, and I start to incorporate that. Now, if I do have a mucus forming item, then I ha I'll have the mucus forming item. I'll start incorporating that into the meal after uh, after I've eaten some of the cooked vegetable. So there's there's a logic to this where I'm always eating this the raw first, then the then the cooked mucus free uh, is with the raw. So I combine it with the raw because the raw helps it eliminate. So the raw is going to help that cooked eliminate. So then I'm combining it with the raw. Then if there's some mucus, I combine that again with the raw uh, because that again the raw is going to help the mucus forming transitional item eliminate well. And by the time you've eaten that, you're, you know, you're starting to get kind of full. And for me, the reason that logic and that, and that fits into Eric's logic of having uh, when he recommended toast, having it at the end of the meal or toward the end of the meal. And uh, and for me, one reason that that makes sense to do it this way is because not only are you creating what I call the mucus free envelope for any transitional item that you that you're putting in there but uh you're also getting used to eating raw mucus free uh so because you because before you get to the cooked item you you've had this this part of this this raw salad then if then if you have a cooked mucus free item you know by the time you get to that and and, and so but maybe you you when you as you were preparing your food you were really craving some mucus or you were thought that you were going to have you know, want a bunch of mucus, but if you eat this raw salad, the the cooked mucus free item, you know, you kind of eat with this logic. By the time you get to that mucus forming item, you'll probably still eat it, but you're gonna realize, like, man, I really don't have to eat it. You know, I'm not I'm not hungry anymore because I just ate all this uh, uh, mucus free food, and you and you learn that you don't have to have the mucus. But uh, so. So yeah, so I don't so I don't know from what you said uh, if if you're having the sal the, the the salads, uh, but because when you say small cooked meal, uh, like I said, I would with that I would always have that that raw salad first. So I would start to eat the raw salad, then incorporate the cooked vegetables, and then maybe you know quinoa if I was going to have a little bit of that or something like that. Uh, so I would eat it with that logic. Now you ask, you'd rather have green juices, uh, uh, fresh and raw f food and fruits. Uh, I mean, that's always good. The, the real arid approach would be to have some kind of, uh, have some juice in the morning, have a, a raw fruit meal in the afternoon, and then a vegetable meal in the evening. Uh, and that is a, his that's his standard sanitarium menu. Uh, there's a lot of variations and part of what's explained in the transition diet lessons are ways to to make variations uh, depending on what you need to do because there's also there's uh, what I call the Eretz two course meal, which is fruit. The fruit, a fruit course, wait 15 minutes, followed by a vegetable course. Uh, so there's a lot of, a lot of different things. And once you really get into the, the book, as well as the practice, you start to understand how you can do these variations and have it suit your, uh, what you're going through, you know, physiologically, what you personally are going through. But, uh, so I would say, you know, if, if you like, you like the green drinks, I would maybe do that early on. Uh, you know, have the green drink and then in the afternoon do have a fruit meal uh, and you do have a raw fruit meal. And then in the evening, have a big raw salad, but have a little little bit of cooked vegetables in there. So it's not uh, it, it shouldn't be real heavy in terms of uh, because when you don't include a whole lot of cook, because I'm not saying you like the whole thing, like throwing a bunch of cooked stuff. But that little bit just takes that takes the edge off enough. 
to make the transition uh, a, a little bit better, you know. And now I, I don't know your personal situation to really give you specific advice. I would have to know a lot more information. And I, I usually I have uh, when I do personal consultations, I send a, a questionnaire that has uh, uh, it's, it's based on some of Eric's questions, but I, I have some of my own questions that bring me up to speed. And once I know things like what you used to eat growing up and your symptoms and what you're eating now, all, you know, these kind of things, then I can really give the, uh, you know, the best advice in terms of someone's particular and personal uh, situation. Uh, because again, as Eric says over and over again, the uh, uh this is very much a unique uh individualized uh, customizable system you know that that's going to be different for each person because every person has uh is coming to the table with different issues different addictions different eating habits uh had studied different things and so all those things have to be taken into account when you start to put together a plan uh for your for your transition so, uh, so and I hope so. I hope that helps a little bit uh, in terms of uh, some some methodologies. But I would, you know, go back over and read through the uh, especially the first couple transition diet lessons, but all those transition diet lessons and uh, and 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 kind of you know see how you can work it. Because if you're eating too much cooked food to the point where you feel like you're you know it's uncomfortable, then it's not you don't necessarily want to totally throw out cooked food yet, but just eat a lot less of it and combine it with with the raw. And uh, and then when you when you if you again you know, if you follow an Eric's methods, when you do a two or three day fast, get the juicer out for two or three days and, and just and drink nothing but juices. You know you can do fruit juice fast. You could do uh there, you know the Eric talks about the lemonade fast, or you could do I don't really call for me green juices don't really constitute a fast just for me personally so if i'm that's you could say well i'm liquid period uh but it's that's that even comes down to your physiology for me if i'm doing a liquid period but i'm incorporating uh the, the vegetable juices for me personally that's not that doesn't feel like a fast I, i'm not it's not really like a fasting period but uh, once I get rid of the green juices and I'm just on the fruit juices, then now that's 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 a fast for me. But um, yeah. So hopefully that hopefully that helps. Uh, so you purchased the book, and I appreciate your help. And uh, may have to contact you. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. And I'll I'll uh, I'll share that link maybe, uh, or the link might even be in the if you go to mucusfreelife.com and uh check out the uh, in the in the store section there's he there's health services section and so the different packages and everything that I offer is over there so you could check uh, check that out so uh well i think i'm gonna go on ahead and wrap it up this has been a fun uh, fun discussion fun, fun evening to be able to share with you some of what i'm doing and uh and hope to have, uh, like I said, I really, I, I would like to be able to give a date when this will, when this will be done. Uh, but uh, I really don't know. But I, I know that I'm, I'm working on it every day until it's done. Now I'm in my mode. Where I go, okay, I'm getting this done, so I'm working on it. So I hope to, uh, to, to get it, to get it all done, so we can get it, get it to you, you know, as soon as possible. I would say by the end of the summer, going into the fall. I definitely want to be, you know, have everything out there for, for folks to be able to take advantage of. So anyway, it has uh, been a, a privilege and a pleasure as always to have this time to talk with you about one of my favorite subjects, which is uh, Professor Arnold Eric and his mucusless diet healing system. And be sure to check out mucusfreelife.com and uh, see, there's a lot of free information there, blog posts and uh, uh, excerpts of books and uh, articles and some some stuff that you can't really see uh, anywhere else. And uh, if you see the uh, if you want to get the free top 10, my, my top 10 favorite mucus free items, click on that and you will automatically be 
uh, added to the uh, Mucus Free Insiders Club. And that means you'll get some emails from me and a new monthly newsletter and all that kind of stuff. You'll be the first to hear about stuff when things happen or things are released, uh, uh, discount codes and sales and coupons, all that kind of stuff. So uh, be sure to sign up for that. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, just, just keep on, keep on transitioning, you know, keep on and, and enjoy yourself, you know, enjoy your life. Um, and, uh, and, and just, it's, it, it sounds corny, uh, or, you know, sounds like something to be on a Hallmark card, but, you know, they say it's, it's really about the journey, you know, and not the destination. And I feel like, that with the mucus's diet that's something that we really need to take to heart and enjoy this process enjoy the transformation enjoy the journey and don't be so caught up in the destination in uh well what what are we supposed to eat and what's the what what's what's the ultimate goal and i'm not saying don't ha don't answer the you know don't ask those questions and answer them for yourself but don't obsess over it that's not to me what it's about. Uh, it really is about, you know, watching this transformation process take place and, uh, and, and feeling it and, and enjoy it. Uh, and of course, and even on days when you're going through something, uh, yesterday, uh, and I, I'll mention this real quick, uh, cause I thought this was kind of interesting. Somebody asked me the question, what 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 does it feel like you know what's what's the mucus's diet feel like when you get to a certain level uh, uh there's a part where eric was talking about the electricity of when you you fast and you start to feel this electric current that goes through you and uh so i was trying to describe it and it's hard other than it's like yeah what eric said you know electric currents like yeah I've, i know what he's talking about i felt that i know what that is uh, and, and I still feel that because sometimes once you get plugged in, even when you start eating bad, you, you don't want to get too far away from that ever again. You want to be plugged in. Uh, but the way that I describe what my experience was when I started the fast and I really started to get cleaner and get, I like to use the word plugged in, you know, plugged into the universe, you know, where you're, where you're flowing, uh, and doing, doing your, uh, you're not fighting against the universe. You're in sync with it. But for me, when I was in, during a fast, the best way that I could describe it, uh, and, and just in general, practicing the mucus diet, it's like mother nature is giving me this eternal hug. It's like, if you know the way it feels when a loved one hugs you, and you embrace with a loved one and, and, and there's that 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 feeling of 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 of, of security and, and love and uh, uh and warmth uh you know feeling safe and, and and feeling free you know that that for me that's how i describe it you know eric described it as an electric current that you that you can feel for me when when i start to feel like that uh it's it, it's just like it's like a hug it's like mother nature is giving you a hug 24 hours a day where when you you know normally you hug somebody then at some point you stop the hug uh this doesn't stop the hug is all the time you know when when you get when you wake up when you fall asleep all day you, you feel that that peace and tranquility and that, that energy and warmth of this hug from the universe, you know, from mother nature, you know? And so that, uh, and that was cool. You know, no, we, that came up yesterday in the, uh, or maybe two days ago in the, uh, the book club that, uh, Bo Yi, uh, Nataraja runs a, uh, Mucus's diet healing system book club. And, uh, so every once in a while I, you know, I join in if I'm available and, uh, and that, that came up and I thought that was a pretty, pretty interesting, uh, you know, interesting discussion that we had. And, and I hadn't, I, I, I had thought about that before and talked, but I hadn't talked that much about it in a lot of the videos. Cause I know that's something that people want to hear more about some of that kind of stuff. Like, well, how, how did you feel and all that kind of stuff? And it's, 
I've always had trouble even articulating the experience part. So I can, it, you know, I tend to like to analyze the methodology and the ideas and the philosophies and stuff. And, uh, and when you start to talk about your personal experience and, and feelings and emotions, uh, I, I just tend to find that words fall short and, and language is limited as much as I love language and, and, you know, and study it and enjoy, you know, words and poetry and everything else. Uh, I find it so much more limiting than music. So, I have a tendency to direct people to my music if they want to get some of my way that I feel about things, you know, the, the emotional, uh, nonverbal feelings uh, that can be shared and transmitted kind of come through the music. But uh, so that said, I thought that was a pretty apt way to to describe that, you know, it's just this uh, mother mother nature's hug, you know, that that's that's the title of a song. So, brother Air, I'm gonna write that song. You know, M Mother Nature's hug, as uh, cause that's that, that's that's real. You know, that's that's real. So, anyway, I want to, again, one last time, thank you so much for plugging. I really love you guys. I appreciate uh, the support for uh, a lot, and there's a lot of other people that that appreciate your support that you don't even know about that. Uh, have that you know practice this diet and they there's a lot of people that never say anything they watch a lot of stuff or they plug into the groups and facebook or something they might not say anything but i know you're out there and i know that you appreciate what we do uh because you might be feeling alone or feeling like uh i mean because you can start to feel like you're going crazy out here because pe people people around you are eating cadavers they're eating dead things and these dead things kill them and create disease and you're not doing it but they make you feel like you're crazy and so to have things to plug into and to be able to to even if you are shy and you don't feel like saying anything you know i know that you're there and i appreciate you and you're not alone you know we we're in this thing together and uh and, and just all you got to do is plug in, <laughs> you know, all, all around the world, we're plugging in. And if there's anything that we can get out of this technology, it's that we're able to we can plug in and support each other and help each other and educate each other about this, this life saving and, and life transforming uh, information, you know, called the Mucus Diet Healing System. So I thank you so much. Until next time, peace, love and breath.